Hello and welcome to another another edition of the Irish Angle on Jump To It. I'm joined as usual by Johnny Ward and Emma Nagel and we're going to discuss the last week all the different things that happened in Ireland and abroad that have some effect on, on us within the horse racing world. Johnny, welcome to the show. Emma, the same. What, how was your last week go? Yeah, good. Uh, good, Vinny. I was... Um... I suppose I was racing in Down Patrick uh, on Friday, and we'll talk about Sam Ewing, who was, I think some people maybe uh, attempted to do the Down Patrick Dundalk double on the way back to the south, and uh, Sam Ewing did it, but he was actually riding at both meetings and had a winner at Dundalk. But um, I was there, I was working, and um, I, I just think the interview, I, I ended up doing an interview with Harry Smith after the race, and it's, it's reported on irishracing.com, um, the, the same interview more or less. And uh, it was just one of these lovely moments, Finney, where... Um, you know, I, I've been at uh, my share of mundane meetings down the years, but they're often the ones where you get the best stories. And Harry was saying he's nearly 86 and he, he uh, trained Will You Walk With Me to win um, a handicap hurdle, um, 16 lengths clear a third as well. And uh, it was just a, a lovely moment afterwards where he spoke about being in the game for over 40 years. He was a, a stock car uh, driver as well. And uh, he was telling me that, you know, racing is only his part-time thing, that his day job entails something entirely different. And I, it got me thinking, I mean, you're supposed to have retired 20 years ago. And he's just an amazing character. And, you know, you look at, I think one thing that racing has for it in terms of um, other sports maybe can compete is the longevity of some of the characters. And I met uh, Jim Bulger at the races recently and I was minded to, at the dog races, and I was minded to... Uh, talk about Kevin Prendergast who was 90 this year and still training winners had the winner in the last in Dundalk on Sunday and these characters are amazing for the game and um, you know it's 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 one of these moments as much as it was an ordinary race uh, you realise that racing is all about these characters um, in, in racing backwaters as well like County Antrim and it was just the first time I ever met uh, Harry and I hope it's not the last yeah, interesting thing I, I see there is that he's talking about retiring, but he hasn't given a date yet. He's a bit like Robert Tyner. He could be around for a while yet, I'd imagine. Um, one thing saying you're retiring, it's another thing doing it. So he's 85. Great stuff, as you said, nearly 86. It's fantastic how, look, it's things like that that keep people alive, isn't it? That you see, you hear so many stories about these people. They hit 65, they retire from work, or they're dead within 12 months or whatever. You need something in your life. And he, he certainly has passions. He, as you say, he's the passion for the stock car race. And three times he was in the World Championships in that or something as well, which is most interesting, isn't it? Um, Absolutely. So there are some great characters. And, and Down Patrick is a is a, a track for characters, isn't it? It's, a, it's some track in itself, the whole place, where it is and everything. The up and down is like a roller coaster. Um, did you yeah, and enjoy the day? You got decent weather, did you? Well, we'd ma- we'd actually mad weather. Vinny was like, I mean, it was definitely four seasons in a couple of hours. It was it was very cold at times because the breeze. There was um, there was a, a a couple of really heavy showers. The sun was out, and this was all within ten minutes. And then there was this massive rainbow that kind of just went either side of the grandstand. And you know, I spoke to. Uh, I spoke to the course manager, Richard Little. I, I did a little interview with him. And, um, you know, when you see what, what a track like that means to the likes of Richard and the work he puts in and the atmosphere is always, like, I always find down Patrick and down Royal there's a real buzz there. And a lot of the tracks down the south could, uh, could certainly, you know, try to emulate them. But they're, they're finished now for the season. But it was uh, it was a great day out and very, very enjoyable. And, um, you know, they, they, they put a lot of effort into making it an enjoyable race meeting and they succeed they do and all the local people look after the food there as well which is interesting too Mm. i remember they used to i don't know whether they still do it they used to do a bowl of stew in the winter it was i think it was two pounds sterling or something for a big bowl of stew and that was just what you needed in some of those winter meetings up and down patrick because it can get very cold all right Uh, emma you're working away with your dad are you getting horses ready for the the jump season yeah, it's kind of it's really kicking off now, isn't it? The jumps kind of during the week there. Your Tipperary, Galway, Fairy House, they're all kind of starting to come out now. And the point of points are there was actually a point of point cancel on Sunday um, up in Lockray. I don't know, was it an insurance problem? I think that was probably it. They kind of cancelled it late enough on, but yeah, no, it's great. The seeing the jumps horses coming back again now over the week, and there's actually schooling races in Tipperary now, uh, Wednesday and Thursday. So you'd imagine there'll be a lot of good horses down there. No, Gordon normally sends a lot of horses down to kind of <laughs> give them a bit of a school before they be out in the track. So you'd you'd imagine there'll be a few good horses down there uh, during the week. So yeah, looking forward to seeing um, some more of them kind of emerge now in the next few days. <laughs> 
Yeah, that was always one that used to frustrate me at the races. You'd see something getting backed in a maiden hurdle in a couple of weeks' time, and you'd hear, oh, yeah, he won two school and hurdles somewhere in Thurless <laughs> and Tipperary. And like, jeez, you'd only know, you know. But anyway, um, on to having a look back at some of the racing from the week. We had some good racing. You mentioned bits of it there. We Tipperary on Monday. A couple of good performances there. The Model Kingdom winning the maiden hurdle, a very good bumper horse, and so Scottish won a novice chase for Emmett Mullins. Um what do you think of that model kingdom, Johnny? Is he one you'd follow going forward? Yeah, the, I, I suppose the, the, the they're the two performances that you'd um, that you definitely mention. The model kingdom is a mare who uh, I'm just looking at her now. She's had five starts. Um, she was sent off one to six, um, but it, it actually didn't. It turned into a race that was kind of. Um, that challenged her a bit because Sari Ann made the run and, and it was a really strong gallop. Sari Ann went and the Model Kingdom, there was no place to hide really, despite the fact she didn't have much hurdling experience. But she won very well and she's she. I think she'll jump better with experience and she's probably a horse. I mean, I, I hate the Mayor's Novice Hurdle, Vinny. I think it's a joke for a race, really, but it's the sort of race where you can imagine she could pop up there and have a chance. And as you say, so Scottish, who of course would probably be remembered for a race that uh, he didn't win which was uh that 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 mad uh gamble at tremor on the 12th of august where he was touched off by diana beaten ahead but he was a kind of a case maybe with him of right horse wrong day because he's as much as he didn't land the gamble that day um his performance at kilbegan was good but he was very very uh efficient in his chase debut at tipperary really really good performance um they were, again they went a good gallop in that race M- motown maggie made the run and she jumped great so there was there was definitely um, no hiding place again, and he looked an absolute natural. And I do wonder what, where they go with him now. We'll see, Railway Hurricane was second, raised 123. He beat him off level weights. So it was probably in the region of 140 type performance. And will they save him now for a good handicap, or will they sort of go down the novice route? But Emmett Mullins and Paul Byrne have a lovely horse in their hands. Yeah. And then we go on to Tuesday. Um, another combination that's going really well is Barry Connell and Michael O'Sullivan. They had a horse called. How, how do I pronounce this? Hegranga de Thai. Um, third winner in a row for the couple. Um, that, that looks like a fair partnership, Emma. What do you think of that? Barry Connell, Michael O'Sullivan, they're winning all round them, aren't they? And they've got another um, fancied horse running later in the week this week. Yeah, and they're, they're absolutely flying at the moment. Like Michael has gotten his professional career after a flying star with them. Um, like it's it's some vote of confidence for a seven pound claimer to be getting a retainer from a trainer like Barry Connell, especially like he's a lot of a lot of nice horses, especially this year. I think he's he's stable as looks very, very strong. Um, I think there's a lot of good lads working in the air there. So he could he could definitely be um he could definitely like I'd say it could be his best year so far, but yeah, they had a lovely horse in Punchestown on Wednesday. I think he was declared this morning um, that Marie National in the maiden hurdle, um, he beat the the big talking horse, the Gordon Elliott's, that demand driving Duvan in Punchestown, I think, was it in May? And he, like he beat him fair easily and he hasn't he hasn't really come off the bridle much in, in his run. So it's kind of hard to know what he is, but if, if he's as good as they're talking and if he's as good as demand driving Duvan, if he's as good as they say, like this, this fellow must be a must be a very very good horse um so uh, yeah i'm looking forward to seeing him as well uh in galloway as well i thought no no need had a great week kind of overall he had that mayor of the model kingdom and i thought he had a very nice uh winner of the bumper in galloway on tuesday and um, that what was it affordable fury i think he was called he's um He's by a fancy. He's a, a see the stars horse. He's actually he's making a big name for himself as a sawyer. And I, I just love the way the horse he he battled away. He beat him a Willie Mullins favourite. I just loved his attitude. He really put his head down and galloped away. He's only a four year old, but I think Noel I think Noel's gonna put him straight over hurdles, so he's definitely a horse that I would take out of that day as well. Very good, yeah. And then we move on. Thursday we had in Thurless, there was a treble for Jessica Harrington um, and Shane Foley. They're, they're really on fire at the minute as well, coming towards the end of the season because they had a very bad start to the season, but certainly Jessica Harrington did. She was as quiet as anything for the first half of it. And we had a 28-1 to winner for Willie Mullins and Shamie Heffernan, that raving royal, very unusual. I know it's on the flat, but still very unusual. And then we went on to Downpatrick Friday where we obviously had the Harry Smith winner, which was um, interesting in itself, as you mentioned earlier, Johnny. And then Saturday, for me, there was one on Saturday that I liked it. Um, there was lots of things happened. A lot of very close finishes in Fairy House on Saturday. I'm not quite sure why that was, but there were loads of them that there seemed to be nothing between them. 
But uh, Lorna Fowler had a winner called Diana, which you mentioned previously there, Johnny, as well, that that was the one that beat South Scottish when they tried to land a gamble on South Scottish down in Tremor uh, back in August. And Diana, I, I thought, I think that's one to watch going forward. We mentioned that at the end of the show. We'll each have a, a horse to follow, but Diana will be mine. Um, moving on then, loads of other things. Sam Ewing, you touched on. He rode at boat meetings on Friday, including a winner on the flat at Dundalk. And then he went and rode a chase in England, a uh, winner at Chepstow on Saturday in Peregrine run the horse's 20th victory and then he, he went yesterday to Foss Lass Effernock Fizz that horse keeps doing it doesn't it and um, did you see those Johnny I actually backed Effernock Fizz um, it was one of these examples where and I texted a few lads in my whatsapp group I said this is one of these uh, back to lays where you back it and you know you think you can lay off and running and I, I have an amazing capacity to back front runners who actually drift in running and this was the case with this horse she didn't <laughs> she didn't shorten at all which which implied that punters thought that maybe Sam was going too hard and she she kind of he kind of had to keep her about her work the whole way, but she only shortened when she, of course, she only shortened when she the race pretty much won, and obviously I laid off my bet then, but um, this was a very good performance, and um, Sam's, I was just like, I minded to look at his, uh, the amount of rides he's had, he's had, in, in October alone, he's had the guts of 20 rides, um, and as you say, to go from, riding over fences to riding a winner at Dundalk then to get on the plane and go over to Britain and ride a uh, winner at, at two different tracks uh, in in the space of a couple of days one ride at each meet it's it's incredible going and it seems like he's kind of been around longer than he has because Sam started when he was very young he's obviously from a great racing family as well and um, you don't really guess uh, you know Rachel Backmore she does the odd dally ants on the flap you don't really get uh, national hunt jockeys riding as much as he does in both codes and um he's just a credit to his family and uh, you know to to uh, obviously you'd mentioned the fahi yard to get peregrine one to win again but i thought he was brilliant in effort fizz and he's a jockey i think we're going to see an awful lot of over the next 20 years yeah he's still only a teenager he, he could be one of the real stars going forward there's no doubt about it uh, then we had the other thing that was of note during the week again was the fallout from the previous week was with Christoph Sumion he lost his retainer um, with the Aga Khan which is it, no, it, look it's hard to know what did he really lose here because the Aga Khan is saying oh we'll still use him when he's available almost um, so he may not have lost a whole lot there but as soon as that was announced, we did. O'Brien jumped in and picked him up to ride Order of Australia in Keeneland at the weekend. The horse finished third. What do you think there, Emma? Um, would you, if you were Aidan O'Brien, would you have picked Christoph Sumi on to ride your horse in Keeneland, or would you pick the local lad, or what would you do after the fallout from the previous week? Um, I think Aidan O'Brien probably wasn't thinking too much about the whole incident. I don't think he did it. So, um, with that in mind, I'd say he probably just thought Christopher was probably the best available. Uh, <laughs> that's what I think anyway, no, I might be wrong. But look, I think the, the kind of statement um, of the retainer was kind of a bit of a token statement, to be honest. Um, he didn't, he's not going to lose a whole pile of forest. He, he's been riding for the Aga Khan since that statement came out. Um, it, so it's up to the trainer's prerogative, but I'd imagine they'll probably keep using him, the ones who had been using him all along. I'd, I'd imagine he'll still be riding Vidani next year. So I, I don't think it's going to have too much of an effect on Christoph Sumian's career, to be honest. Um, look, I suppose everyone has their opinion. Some people, I suppose the majority of people th probably think it was a bit lenient and there's a lot of kind of articles coming out. Um, a lot of racing people seem to be defending him, which I suppose is telling that it probably won't have too much of an effect on his career long term, you know, Aidan O'Brien Aidan O'Brien obviously didn't um didn't take too harsh a view on it. Um and sure look I suppose life goes on and Chris assume on we'll keep riding winners and that's that's the end of it I'd, I'd say for me really. <laughs> yeah, that's fair enough. And then we had Saturday um the Jewhurst in Newmarket, Johnny Chaldine beats Royal Scotsman, Nostrum and then Aesop's Fable back and forth. That Aesop's Fable I was very surprised here. Aidan O'Brien had won that race five times in the last nine years. You'd think that that's a race he targets, and yet I'm very surprised considering he has such ammunition this year in the two-year-old ranks that he ran, ran Aesop's Fable over seven furlongs, knowing that there was a doubt about the horse staying the trip. It did win um, in the Curra on its second start, I think it was, over seven, but I know that Aidan said that day that he was, he was a bit surprised it had won because he thought it's a sprinter, it's got all the makings of a sprinter, and then it got beaten the next day over seven when it looked like it didn't possibly stay against Al Riffa in a group one at the Curra. So I was surprised he went seven furlongs again, and it obviously didn't stay. Um, Chaldean, is that one for next season for you, Johnny? For for classics, hardly, maybe. 
Yeah, well, I mean, Ace of Fable, I think maybe the soft ground was was against him the, the, the last day at the Curra, but he did look fairly limited on the day, and uh, I thought he was kind of beaten fair and square. So, I, I to be honest now, and I, I don't know this, but I wouldn't have thought Hayden's hopes were all that high when he went to Newmarket. He's had a lot of these known name nevers this year that have uh, done very well. But, I mean, again, it's 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 just the, you're talking about Frankel and the influence he's having. Um, obviously, got the ARC winner with Chaldean as well, winning another big winner for him, and is completely brave to make into a three-year-old and you can sort of see the changing of the guard now where the influence of Galileo is just getting noticeably lesser um, with every year um, and Aidan is obviously, you know, he's he's going. They're, they're soon going to expire the last of the Galileo two-year-olds, and you see Frankel the influence. Aidan doesn't have that many of them, but Frankel the influence he's having, and it is sort of changing the guard a bit. I'm not entirely sure how good Aidan's two-year-olds are this year, but I don't think we saw the best of them in the Dewhurst anyway. And obviously, then that's preceded uh, the handicap King Charles Burns winning the big race. Yeah, that was one now. Charles won very, very easily. Um, saying that that run for Oscar, it won in Haydock um, earlier in the season, landed a gamble and went up £9, which brought it up to a rating of 90. So the, um, the, presuming the idea was that the horse would get into the English Cesaro, which it just missed out on the Irish one because a 91 was the lowest rated horse that ran in the Irish version, which was worth three times as much as the UK version. But great performance from Charles. He's obviously hasn't gone away is the bottom line when it comes to these handicappers. Um, a couple of other things to note from the last week. First of all, there was a, a few people passed away that were involved in Irish racing. One of them was James Collins, who was a jockey from Limerick, used to ride for Desi Hughes, really nice guy. Um, premature because he'd only be about the same age as myself, which is a, which is a worry when you see people like that going at the same age as yourself. It's always a, a bit of a panic. Um, the other one was Liam Ward, who was six times uh, Irish, champ, Irish champion jockey. He was um, before my time now, admittedly, 1960s into the 70s. He rode Nijinsky to win a 1970 Irish Derby. Rode Nijinsky to win more times than Lester Pickett did, is a little fact you have there now after that. Um, but the other thing to take note of that a, a guy messaged me the other day, very interesting thing about Liam Ward, and I, I'm not sure if it's 100% true, but it sounds great anyway, that back in the day he was riding photo finishes where big betting heats took a long time for the photo finish to be announced after races, and the bookmakers normally bet on them and bet strongly, and punters love them. But when Lee Mord was involved in a tight finish, the bookmakers tended to steer clear of them. And the reason was that Lee Mord had this knack in a tight finish that he'd flick his wrist just coming to the line and he'd tap the horse under the chin with his whip and the horse had extend its neck. So he won more often than he didn't. So the bookmakers didn't like it. So I, I don't know whether it's true, but it's an interesting thing. And then the, the other... Um, racing person who died was Val Joyce who worked for RTE he'd be before your time guys but um he used to present a show on Saturday afternoons called airs and races which was extremely popular back in the day and that was one of the things I was, I was writing a blog about that this week just saying about the fact that when he had that show there used to be a metropolitan meeting a meeting in the greater Dublin area every single Saturday of the year and people knew that the racing public within Dublin knew there was a race meeting nearby and they could go to it and everything else. And we're just talking about here we are now. We're on the 10th of October today and we still don't know the fixtures for 2023. They haven't been announced yet. Johnny, what's the story there? Do you think that's it's a, it's a bit of a mess, is it, that we don't know? It's very strange. I mean, I, I have to say, I, I, I mean... I was surprised when you when you brought it up pre-show because you know you do need to plan. People need to plan what they um you know if they're traveling overseas and even with horses. I think you need to you you will have races in mind uh, a long way out. And it's strange. It's just it seems to to have been left very very late. And in general, I think um. <laughs> Irish racing is 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 quite well organised. I mean, I, one of my pet hates, Vinny, is how it seems to me that ninety nine point nine 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 percent of races in Britain do not go off on time anymore. Whereas in Ireland, um, when I started getting into racing, I remember that was the that was the case, and they they made an effort to say, "Listen, we're going to get Irish race off on time." Ten or twelve years ago, and there was a massive change, and it's been good ever since. But this is very strange, and uh, it's just hard to plan anything when you when you don't obviously know what's coming down the tracks. Yeah, I, I've had quite a number of people emailing into the site from, from abroad, basically, wanting to know, um, oh, we're planning on coming on a holiday to Ireland in April. What meetings are on that week? We're looking for the fixtures in your site and we can't find them. And the same for other people talking about, oh, planning things during the summer and what, what's on that particular day? And do you know if such and such a race meeting's on because we're going to be in that area? And we've no idea. Now, I, I'm told, I've been on to horse race in Ireland, I'm told it's imminent, um, the announcement of the new fixture list, but we've already had a couple of leaks of it already with Punchestown talking about amalgamating some meetings next autumn. 
um, in their fixtures and everything else. Like those other tracks have also come out about some of their fixtures. It just seems ridiculous that we're in the situation here. As I say, we're, we're nearly, we've 11 weeks to go to the start of 2023 and we don't know what fixtures are on in 2023. Um, anyway, we move on from that. Emma, the other thing I wanted to talk about a little bit about anyway was Patrick Mullins went over to ride in the Czech Republic at the weekend. Um, the Velka Pardabika. It's been running since 1874. It's a second go at it. He finished, um, or he got to the fourth fence last year, and then he got to the sixth <laughs> fence this year. So uh, he's making progress. But it's an interesting race. Um, surprising more don't go for it. Some of the Irish horses particularly. You think he would have ridden an Irish horse in it. His father could have sent one over. They'd have plenty, <laughs> wouldn't they? God, I'd, I'd say to be hard enough to get a, a horse that would suit that that style of racing. Um, it's it's a mad race to watch. Like you see, it, it's I think it's four miles too, and they go through ploughed fields, and they, I think they jump thirty one obstacles, and they'd be all different kinds of fences. Like it's it's mad to watch. Um, and the ground would be rock hard as well. So that's probably that's probably what's putting a lot of people off going over there. Um, I'm not sure what kind of prize money it is, but you'd imagine it's it's quite big, like with the kind of prestige of the race, but. Yeah, I mean, we've seen Willie kind of, I think Willie, did he Willie send a horse to the Japanese Grand National, that Black Stair Mountain? So, it, yeah, it's, it's surprising maybe that Patrick hasn't talked him into giving him one, giving him one to send over there. But, um, it, yeah, it's, it's gas that Patrick's trying it like, because it's, 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 it's a crazy race, I'd say, to ride in. It is absolutely terrifying just watching it. It's, like the, it's hard to even know what direction they're going in half the time. Um, I think you were saying that Paul Carberry had tried it as well, but I think any Irish jockey has ever actually won it. But yeah, no, I think the fence that Patrick fell on last year was the taxi. That's I think that's kind of the notoriously hardest fence in the in the race, and he didn't get much further this year. But uh, he'll probably be back again. I think he was actually third in the race before the big one, so it's, he'll probably be back again next year to another go. I'd say. Oh, I'd say so. Surely his father has something that'll get him beyond six fences anyway next year. That would be the plan, I'd imagine. Um, and then. <laughs> Uh, lastly, we're going to just go through and pick a horse to follow from the last week. First of all, Johnny, you've got one that runs today that you picked on a previous show and it's been backed off the boards already, hasn't it? Yeah, by the time you listen to this, it'll have been an unlucky and running third or something like that. But uh, that's Shadowbox anyway. Yeah, I was. Um, it, it's funny, Vinny, because when, when she ran the last day, I was saying essentially a mile and three on soft ground or whatever. And that's exactly what she has today. So no excuses. Hopefully um, she continues John Murphy's fine form at uh, Killarney. I didn't have that many in terms of... Um, eye catchers of the week but the one horse I, I would like to give a mention to um, going forward and he's probably a little bit reliant on nice ground so I don't know how much longer um, Nigel Seven will be able to ha to keep him on the go is Single Edition um, who's a horse by Burratino and Emma's into her pedigrees but she wouldn't have um, designed this horse to be running in a handicap hurdle at Downpatrick because as I say he's by Burratino half brother to a winning sprinter out of a winning sprinter as a two year old yes he ran over two miles two in a hood over hurdles on yielding ground at down patrick and it, it it did take a bit of getting like it was summer soft but it did take getting and they were miles clear of um third and obviously the race was notable for harry smith winning it but i thought um Sean Flanagan gave single edition a great ride um, and he settled better in the hood and he stayed on really well when he was headed and I think there's a nice little race to be won with this horse before the ground worsens. Okay, Emma, you've won for the week, have you? Or from the week? Yeah, I, what I mentioned earlier, affordable fury in Galway, but um, apart from him, I, a horse that I really like, she won in Fairy House in the Mayor's Novice Chase, Broomfield Hall. Um, I, I just really, I, I like this mare when she was hurdling. I think she, she's just got a great attitude and I, I like the way she goes about things and she got her chasing career off to a good start. Well, her jumping, her jumping was maybe a small bit questionable, but I think it was just obviously mistakes. But I think like she, she beat a few nice horses in behind her and I think like there's a great program for mares going novice chasing and she would probably won that win I think she'll win a lot of races this year she was kind of rated in the mid 120s over hurdles but she could probably be a better tracer I'd say again and she, she's one that I that I really like and it was, it was great to see her get, um, get a winning start again so yeah she'll be one I'll be following throughout the season 
Yeah, one I liked, I mentioned it previously there, is at Fairy House on Saturday, Lorna Fowler's Diana. Um, she, probably a little bit small to go chasing, to be honest with you, but I'd say she may do in some at some stage in her career because she's she's well related. She's from the family of Woodland Opera, which was a nine-time winner, and Opera Hat, which is a 15-time winner, used to keep winning in Nace all the time, Opera Hat. I think Opera Hat won about 13 chases, as far as I remember. Um, probably a lucky winner the other day, but Kieran Buckley, there was a horse in front, which unseated at the last, was a couple of lengths clear, but Kieran Buckley, who wrote it who's one of the rising um, stars of the game at the minute he he thought he was going to win anyway and I like the attitude of this Diana she's she's never run a bad race now that was I think her sixth start she's run well every day never out of the first four I, I'd be thinking she's one to follow she's still off a low enough rating she was only off 102 I think when she won at the weekend so presuming she goes up six or seven pounds if even that um, she still has a race or two in her I would have thought and she could have a long career because she's she's well related to ones that like winning and that's a it's always a good sign when you have one that has the willing attitude that's the key to it well look guys thanks for joining me this week uh, a good chat again about all sorts and we'll be back again next Monday for the same thanks for joining us bye for now